Now, you may know this, but then you may not. But there once was a poor grey toy keeper who owned a quaint little shop. In all the land over, and well past the sea, there was no greater mender of toys than was he. But in all the days which have passed neath the sun, he has fixed many dolls, but made only one. The doll was given Dudley for his name, and though all the children would ask for him, they would all hear the same. Can I have the lamb there in your desk? I love my dear Dudley, so must deny your request. At night, the toy keeper worked alone in his house, fixing toys broken by children and by Silas the Louse. You see, each morning he would arrive at his store and he'd find a toy broken that wasn't before. I wonder what happens in here every night that I should always come in to find such a fright. <sighs> For the thing that I know, but the toy keeper did not, is that one of his toys had a soul turned to rot. Now the tale I will tell may seem false, but was true. It may scare girls and boys, and it may frighten you. For when the toy keeper made Dudley last fall, he put all of his goodness into the lamb doll. And Dudley was filled with such pure, gentle love that he was granted a soul from above. It is here that our tale begins to turn sad, for where you have good, you must also have bad. Even a grey toy keeper must have some dark in his light. But none went to Dudley when he was made there that night. So that grim power found the first place that it could, a newly fixed toy on the desk made of wood. And in that wooden wolf it festered and grew until the dark power gave Silas life too. The next morning the keeper rose and he took all the fixed toys back to his little toy nook. The keeper, you see, well he couldn't have known of the evil in Silas which had already grown. He placed the grey wolf with the other fixed toys, there to be sold to wee girls and boys. Dudley he placed far from the floor, on the counter where he could watch over the store. All the day long he'd watch and he'd peer, and he would be happy while his maker was near but the keeper would leave him to go home every night, and what he would see then would fill him with fright. But when the toy keeper slept alone in his house, that was the playtime of Silas the Louse.
Budley sat and he quivered and felt heavy-hearted. Had his troubles now stopped or only just started? I surely don't know what there is to be done, but today I've lost two toys instead of just one. If I didn't know better, I'd say you two had a fight. Don't worry, my dears. I can fix you tonight. Dudley knew that Silas would hurt his poor toy-keeping man, but he couldn't stop him. He hadn't a plan. So while Silas lies silent in his bag the whole day, Dudley sat and tried to think of a way, and he waited. And he thought, until the store had to close. Then Dudley summoned his courage, and in a moment he rose. He knew that his foe lied in the bag beneath the table, and he wanted to reach it, but alas was unable. It was farther down than he thought he could fall, and he started to wonder if he could reach it at all. When the keeper returned, Dudley dropped immediately, for no living toy can move what a human can see. As soon as he passed and lost Dudley from sight, the lamb stood and jumped with all of his might, and before the toy keeper could notice its sag, Dudley found an open pocket and slipped into the bag. The toy mender set down his tools and went for some juice, giving Dudley just enough time to get loose. So Dudley hid while the toy mender toiled, and soon grim Silas looked completely unspoiled. The keeper continued to mend the wrecked toys, while Silas stared at him with murderous poise. I'll come for him, thought the wolf, and I'll find him in bed, and when he wakes up, he'll find himself dead. Dudley knew what lived in the wooden beast's mind, and he knew this was one toy he couldn't treat kind. The night had been long when the keeper went to retire, so long that he forgot his lamp's burning fire. Soon he was in bed and quite sound asleep when Silas awoke and was able to creep. The flickering flame burned deep orangey bright, and at once Dudley knew how to finish this fight. But that wasn't all the sweet Dudley knew, for he realized that that was just what Silas would do. And as much as he wanted to be rid of the beast, he didn't want to be like him, not in the least. But what to do now? Oh, if Dudley wouldn't end the fight, old Silas knew how. As Dudley lie wounded on the bench, he looked down. He saw many things there on the ground. A mighty plush bear that once he did know, and a little toy house covered in little toy snow. There was a painting of a field, all covered in flora, and a small wooden box that some called 
Pandora. He stared at the box, and like lightning he knew, he would again reach for Silas, then all this would be through. Only one thing was left till the battle was won, a turn of the key and the locking was done. But the key couldn't stay because of the evil inside. But what was the best place for a small key to hide? Oh, my sweet Dudley, how did you get here? What happened to you, my little lamb dear? What a terrible, dreadful dark night. Don't worry, sweet lamb. I'll fix you up right. And the keeper fixed Dudley up, good as brand new. But why he was heavier, the keeper never quite knew. For he had a box at his home, by his bench on the floor. But the key to this box now sat in his store. And that is my story, every word of it said, of a little lamb doll sewn with magical thread. Not the thread that holds his ears to his head. I speak of the thread that gives him courage instead. He faced his fears and to himself held true. Sometimes that's the toughest thing for anyone to do.